Hey guys, welcome to season two of Frontier Hang. And let me tell ya, there's gonna be a load of things going on, and I'll try to do my very best to capture it all on the camera. So stay tuned, keep DIY, and live out the Frontier way. But first, Peter had caught on fire. Now, literally, it caught on fire yesterday. And you might remember this another fella here on which I repair the switch. And this is the second heater. And just yesterday, it caught on fire. So we're going to disassemble it and let's see what exactly caught fire in there. So you might remember that when I was disassembling the other heater, I uh, talked about the similarities between those heaters. So again, just doing that, pulling the undercarriage off. But this heater is slightly more complicated because the U piece or U bolt isn't connected directly to the undercarriage, but first it's mounted to a piece of sheet metal and then another set of nuts connected to the undercarriage itself. Then we have the electronics cover, the front panel, which is held uh, by a set of screws, in this case I believe these are just two, I'm not sure how it is in the other, end, on the other side, but before I start disassembling, I reattach the undercarriage, so that the thing can stand up on its own, so now the screws and self-tapping screws we have to take this out and then these two knobs To be honest, I don't see anything out of the ordinary so far. Now this is a curious thing because as far as I'm concerned, I don't see any signs of fire whatsoever. There is like dust and animal hair in there, but it doesn't. It doesn't look like there was something 
series going on in terms of... Oh dear, I might actually see it. I was kind of afraid this situation might happen, because the way I see it, the only way to be sure... is to test it without the cover. We'll try to reenact the circumstances and we'll see if anything goes burning. What I'm trying to convey here is I'm going to try reigniting the fucking heater. Okay, so I got everything prepped up. I set up the front panel on a paintbrush zip tied to the mainframe because I figured that the temperature control is based on a small weight uh, which needs to pull down on the bimetallic plate so if the panel was just laying on the ground it wouldn't work so I had to do it this way and I've also prepared an old baking tray so that if anything catches fire it doesn't ignite the carpet hopefully the controls are turned to maximum power and we'll try to literally ignite it again we'll just put it into the socket let's not forget safety hello fire and explosion in three two one and so far nothing happened the indicator light hasn't come on I can tell it's dead. I'm really thinking now and I think that if we put an arm meter between leads down there that lead to the uh, heating element we should be able to determine whether they are intact and I have the feeling as if though they just blew out. Everything is disconnected now. One more thing to try out, because I highly doubt that both heating elements would go off at the same time. So as of now, both of them are switched so let's try to plug it in and turn off the first element in the second. If I'm not mistaken, then the heating elements should have some electrical resistance, but the resistance shouldn't be infinite and it shouldn't be zero. So anything in between zero and infinity means that the heating element is all right. Okay, so let me check the blue wire, the blue cable, that's the neutral, and then you have red and white wire, which are the phase voltage, and by turning the knob, you either send voltage to first, second, or both at the same time, and thus you either have 500, 1000 and together 1500. So theoretically um, between the blue one and white one and between the blue one and the red one there should be something between zero and infinity. So let's check the red one.
<sighs> so, as of now, we can positively say that the heating elements blew out. Okay, so turns out the heating elements are actually good because I took the whole panel off, disconnected all the uh, wires and measured the resistance between the ground and the two parts of the element and uh, on one I get 60 ohms and on the other I get 40 ohms and if you uh, do your math then you will know that if this heating element is supposed to have uh, is rated for 2000 watts then um, the total uh, resistance of these two heating elements in parallel should be about 23 or 26 ohms which is exactly what uh, 60 and 40 ohms will give you in a parallel combination, 23 ohms. So the heating element is actually good and so I was like, okay, so what could have gone wrong? Uh, the dump switch is okay, the switch itself, there's virtually nothing that could go wrong. Unless you could see some melted plastic or something or something something like that, which I cannot. The uh, thermostat uh, works good because if you turn it, you can. You can hear the clicking of the bimetallic plate and so I was like what the f could have gone wrong and then it struck me if you connect one probe here and you take the other probe and touch the terminals you get 0.6 ohm, that's the resistance of the wire uh, in the cable. On the second terminal you get yeah, you get 60, that's the second heating element running in series with all of that. So left lead on the power cable is okay, but if you try the same with the left one, or with the right one, if you look at it from the side of you putting it into a socket, then you got infinity and again infinity, so that basically means that this lead is not connected to the heater at all. My theory is that all the years of bending this cable and tugging combined with the heat coming from inside caused one of the wires inside the cable to go poof, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, a simple rewiring of the power cable should do the trick. And here goes the culprit. As you can see, the cables are 
completely disconnected and a whole portion of the cable just melted down and that's why it didn't work. So all I'll have to do is to snap the cable some 15 centimeters from the bad spot and attach new leads to the cable it should be fine however i need to buy these because i have some fast on connectors but not the hoop type so stay tuned keep diy and live out the funky way